What is going on guys? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. I first want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys. Uh, I am so thankful for having each and every one of you as part of this community. Even if it's your first time to this channel, welcome. Take a sit back. Um, today's going to be a combination of like a tip video with the vlog, um, as well as a pretty cool announcement. And I am waiting for my dinner to be ready. My dinner for any of you guys that are curious my favorite food. I've had this every single day of the week so far. It is only Tuesday, but pizza. And this thing is, woo. Yep, so let me grab that and then I'll talk to you guys in a second. fix you guys all right so hopefully your mouth is watering with the pizza I'm going to enjoy it while talking to you guys I have another one of it so forgive me if it beeps um, but like I said this is going to be a vlog a tips video and an announcement so let's do the announcement first because I'm super excited about this um, last year I wrote my first book for the mdjourney.com and um, I never imagined myself being a writer, but uh, the book was successful, so I wrote another one uh, this past, I think, June. And that one did even better, and I was wondering which element of the medical journey I had still missed on all my tips, all the blogs, on the posts, like who was I missing and helping out? And I realized the majority of the questions and emails and comments that I usually get are for people who want to go into medical school, but still aren't there. And so the pre-meds out there, I hear you guys, I wanted to create something special for you. And so for the last about month and a half, I've been working on my third book. And so the pre-med journey, this is the cover as of now, is going to be released probably within the next week on Amazon. So it's going to be my first book on Amazon, super excited. And so my plan is, while you're watching this video, likely around Thanksgiving time, uh, to have the book out in about a week. So I'm going to put in the link in the description. It's just like a, a wait list info where you get to hear about the book as soon as it comes out. Basically, I'm going to try to give it to you guys for the lowest price that Amazon allows me to give it to you for. And I just want you guys to let me know what you think. That way I can fix it up and improve it and make it even better. Um, but I'm super excited for the pre-med journey. Um, my third book so far, and not my last, but definitely one that I'm really proud of, um, just because uh, I feel like I've been missing out on helping you pre-meds out for a while, and hopefully this book kind of covers that. So once again, if you're a pre-med, you just kind of want to see what tips I would give to myself as uh, a pre-med from day one to you know getting accepted to medical school. What would I have done differently um, throughout the process? Check out this book, The Pre-Med Journey. Um, hopefully you guys like it. Super excited, but likely will come out within a week. So link is in the description if you guys want info and kind of be the first ones to have uh, a crack at it when the book comes out. But that's it for the announcement. Um, I'm going to take a bite of this pizza real quick. All right, now that I have some food inside me, let's get to the tips portion of this video. And the tips I want to give are what six tips would I give to create the most successful pre -med? What tips would I give to myself from day one of college um, to the very end? My pizza is about to get ready, sorry. Um, but what tips would I give to myself as a freshman in college to the person who got accepted in medical school? What would I have done differently? And so I'm gonna give you some six different tips. Some of them are a little bit more details than others, but hopefully each of them you can take home with you and do something actionable if you feel like you can make some adjustments. Um, so number one, everyone wants to know how to study. That's the question that I get all the time. And what I tell everybody who sends me an email, something about studying, is that you need to worry about systems over methods. For example, I teach a lot of my students different techniques on how to incorporate active learning into their life from the start to the very finish, and that way they can be more efficient with their time. A lot of the kind of setback that I get is when the student takes those techniques, uses it for a bit, but then still kind of goes back to using the techniques that don't work. 
And when it's combined, it's not super efficient. It's not that the technique doesn't work. The system is broken. You know, you can improve your engine on a car for all you want, but if the rest of the car doesn't work well together, then the car is still not that great. So you need to approach your studying in the same way. Everything you do, whether it's reading the syllabus for the first time, going to lecture, reviewing your notes, studying for your test, taking practice questions, taking actual tests, be critical of how you can be more productive, more efficient. Ask yourself, is this something that I should be doing because it's actually helping me, one. And two, how can I make this better? How can I be more efficient? Am I being distracted? Um, if so, how can I improve it? Is this technique actually allowing me to retain info? If not, why am I still doing it? You need to be critical because every time you are able to self-assess um, each kind of step along the way, you're going to improve the system. There's a reason that they come out with a new car every year, and ideally that car is a better car than the prior um, year. It's they're improving on some aspect, however small, but then overall you have a better and better car along the way. Same thing goes for your pre-med journey. Every step from your freshman year to your senior year um, in college, you want to approach your studying, your productivity like a system and ask yourself what type of things are making your system not function correctly, improve on those, and then don't be satisfied. Ask yourself what's the next step you can take to make it more efficient. Um, I think if you approach a lot of your things in your life, like systems instead of just methods and techniques, um, sure, you may get some success here and there, but it's very easy to be demotivated um, when things don't work. But if your system is uh, in place, then you're much less likely to have things kind of fall through. So remember, systems over methods. So tip number two, and this is something I give a lot in different variations throughout my videos, but it's the importance of continuity and uniqueness over just going with the flow. If you're a pre-med, you're likely a bio major, you likely do a pre-med organization, you may probably volunteer at a hospital. You know, if you're watching this video, maybe at least two of those three, if not all three of those things apply to you. Um, and those are totally fine, but a lot of times we do those activities because we see everyone else doing it, so we're like, well, you know, this is what I need to do to get into medical school. But remember, when people are looking at your application, your application is going to look exactly like the people around you because you're doing the exact same things that they are. So to make yourself stand out, to kind of get a second look, you want eyeballs on your application when you turn it in. You want um, something to stick on your interview day when they interview you. You want to have some type of uniqueness. And the way you can build uniqueness is having a kind of a flow of continuity. Instead of trying to do a lot of different things, focus on a few things and do them well and try to progress um, make a bigger impact along the way, just make a bigger mark. Um, and that way your application can show kind of um, a little, what I like to call cohesion. Everything is kind of makes sense. Um, you're an attractive applicant because you probably have something on your application that most people don't, which is you stuck to something um, regardless or not if it seemed to be the stereotypical pre-med thing to do. So remember, Uniqueness and continuity are much more important than just going with the flow. Yes, you can have the research, yes, you can have the shadowing, um, but you want to stand out. If you want to take the typical pre-med approach um, on the activities uh, that you do, you know, by all means, be my guest. Um, there's obviously plenty of people that do it each and every year that get into medical school. But the problem is, is that most people are very stressed during this application process because they realize the reality of it, which is it's hard to distinguish themselves from their peers. Well, on the other hand, somebody who had a very unique application that focused more on continuity, kind of thought out of side of the box and followed their passions, their whys, and led to their activities versus finding activities um, and then trying to come up with a why, um, that first person is going to have an application that's going to be much easier to sell and thus they're going to be much less stressed. So continuity, uniqueness, over going with the flow. So tip number three, and it kind of goes with tip number two to another level, which is create impact and change. Remember, we want to kind of have that wow factor in our application. Doing the typical things everyone else does doesn't really allow you to do that. So instead, try to find something in your application where you can grow with a role. You know, if you start an organization, for example, be a member for a semester, join a leadership position the next semester, keep going. Uh, even within those leadership positions, try to make true change versus just doing what that role entails. Ask yourself, how in this role can I make this organization better? this community service project better, this research project better, try to own your role. If you do that, it's hard for the interviewer, the admission board to look at your application and not pay attention to the change you've made. I'm gonna give you a quick example of my own experience as I'm applying to residency after medical school. 
the most common question that I get about my application uh, on my interview day is, I'll let you see if you guys can guess. It's this, it's the YouTube channel, it's the blog. It's different. Um, it's something I created. It's something that's grown with me. It's something that I'm, I'm doing because I want to have an impact. Every time I'm talking to this camera, I act like I'm talking to at least one person that needs these tips. Um, it may not be you, and that's totally fine. Um, but there is, I hope there's somebody on the other side of this camera who takes these tips and realizes, okay, they can make some type of impactful change. And if that's true, these videos are completely worth it. And so that's my create impact and change um, kind of message and approach that I took for my medical school application. Now, I'm not saying obviously create a blog or a YouTube channel. If that's not your thing, don't do it. Um, but this was my venue to help a specific um, community of individuals that I kind of was attracted to. Um, for you, that may be somebody totally different. You may be interested in helping, for example, the homeless population. Habitat for Humanity is a great way to be involved in that. Um, you may be involved in a community that have no idea um, how you can help them, but you may. So find that community, find that kind of thing that attracts you. It doesn't necessarily have to be in medicine, but grow with it and have an impact. Uh, it can be an organization, it can be a bigger project, something smaller. Um, it can be something like a talent that you grow um, to something much bigger, but make sure you're showing that progression, you're showing some change, and ideally you're impacting the lives of other people. So if you can do that on your application, people are just gonna be curious. You know, I always get the question like, tell me about this website. Like, what are you doing? You know, what's kind of come out of it? Uh, and they love talking about it, they love hearing about it. So find what that would be for you where you put something on your application and they just can't resist but ask. Um, I feel like you're going to, it's going to be so much easier to sell yourself um, and it's going to be a much less stressful uh, experience throughout your pre-med journey. So tip number four, I give this a lot. Hopefully you guys can understand the benefit of it um, as I kind of give these tips to you, which is you need to focus on introspection. Um, this is something that I felt like a lot of my pre-med peers um, struggle with because no one really tells you um, to really give a crap about introspecting. Maybe you're told later when you know you hit uh, medical school burnout or residency burnout that you need to start kind of thinking about your thoughts. I'm not telling you to go journal. Um, I don't journal. Um, what I'm telling you to do is after each experience that you do, when you volunteer, when you do research, when you shadow, uh, when you succeed, and when you fail, take 30 seconds, 30 seconds, ask yourself, what can I take from this? Ask yourself, how can I apply this? Because if you take that, you're going to be asked about those experiences that you put on your application. And if you gave 30 seconds to that uh, experience just to think about it, you probably gave 30 more seconds than most of your peers that also have those same experiences put down. 30 seconds can give some brilliant thoughts. Um, and usually your brain can't resist. So if you give 30 seconds, it's gonna take two minutes. Um, but you're going to have some very rich connections between your experiences and you're going to be able to give advice as well as to just share your story in a very authentic way. But you can't do that um, realistically if you don't introspect enough. 30 seconds is nothing guys. Um, but I feel like sometimes we tell ourselves that ah, it's not that big of an experience. Um, it's not that big of a deal. It's hard to tell what's a big deal if you don't give it much thought. So I plead with you just take 30 seconds after everything you do. Maybe after every video you watch um, after every book you read, after every encounter you have, and just say, what, what did I take from that? Um, what did I learn about myself? What did I learn about others? Um, what was good and what was bad? Um, you get to learn so much about yourself, the people around you, um, and just how you approach things if you take just a couple of seconds. All right, so I feel like we're getting in this like motivational uh, groove, but I wanna finish off with two tips that are a little bit more practical as well as motivational. So tip number five is you need to go from the how to's and just start doing the how. I mentioned this in the previous video that I recorded, and I'll link it down below, of how we sometimes eat without digesting. Um, sometimes we gain so much info. You're probably watching this video trying to get some type of leg up as a pre-med. Um, and maybe you just wanted to see me eat pizza, I don't know. Um, but every time we try to gain some information, we we have a lot of, oh, this is a, something I could be doing. This is a new way to study. This is a cool way to do well in the MCAT, whatever it may be. How often do we actually apply everything? Maybe we apply it like day one and then day two, we try to look for another technique, um, but we're not really consistent, nor do we actually apply what we learn. Uh, we just try to learn things and hope that one day it will become helpful. So get out of this mindset of finding the how-to and start doing the hows. Um, find one thing that you wanna learn, 
uh, or improve on, learn one way to do it, apply it for a few days before you start going back to the drawing board and try to understand a different way to do it. Um, you're just going to have a lot more results. Sometimes the best thing to learn from, guys, is your failures and not the other hows, not these YouTube videos. So take these hows, take these tips, see how they all work for you. If they don't, then you should understand that, you know, that tip isn't for you, but at least you know. So remember, going from the how-tos to the hows, super important. And the last tip, I want to kind of end on a happy note, uh, just because I feel like this has been a pretty uplifting video, or at least I feel pumped up, uh, hopefully you do too, which is your happiness is controlled by only you. The pre-med journey, guys, is super stressful. You have the MCAT, you have a lot of hard classes, you know, you have to worry about your GPAs when some of your colleagues can just say P equals degree. You can't do that. You know, there's a lot of stressors that are involved in trying to get into medical school, and I get it, I was part of it. But as we go through the process, the grind, you know, working hard is its own thing, but sometimes we tend to look around. We try to see what everyone else is doing. We try to compare ourselves to our peers, and that starts to get the ball rolling where we become demotivated, burnt out, um, and honestly just stressed more than we should be. But just remember that the person who controls your emotions is you. So if you feel bummed out, it's probably because you're giving things too much thought, probably more than they uh, deserve. Um, things may not have gone your way. You feel like it's the end of the world. But remember, you know, you're know you going to get through it like you've always had. Um, so understand that the pre-med journey can be an enjoyable experience. I remember my three years in college and my four years in med school. It's a very positive experience because I have a lot of cool memories. Um, I have experiences like this vlog um, as well as the blog that have been created during this time. And I can look back at those three to four years in a very positive light. So understand that your emotions, your attitudes are controlled by you and not by the things that happen to you. So. But those are my six tips. I know some of them are more motivational. I know some of them are a little more application-based, um, but take those with you guys, because I feel like the students that I coach, um, the ones who get it, the ones who do well in med school, the ones who remain to be successful, um, and don't just, don't just get into med school, the successful med students are the ones that have these six tips. They introspect, they're focused on being out of the box and creating a versus just going with the flow. They have systems. And they control their emotions and they choose to be happy when they can. Um, so take that with you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, enjoyed making it for you guys. I still have another slice of pizza, so I need to finish this. So I'm going to let you guys go. But remember that the Prima Journey book is coming out on Amazon, uh, ideally in a week. So link is in the description if you guys want to just uh, be on the email list to know when the book goes out. Again, I will try to give it to the cheapest price that Amazon allows me to give. Um, and I'd love to hear you guys, uh, y'all's reviews. Uh, on the book. Um, if you guys have any questions about the pre-med journey at all, not just the book, but just your own pre-med journey, uh, comment down below. And I'd love to hear from you guys um, on your questions, your experiences, your inspirations. Again, in honor of Thanksgiving, I want to once again say thank you so much uh, for being part of my journey, allowing me to be a small part in yours. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a like. If you aren't uh, a part of the community yet, um, consider subscribing uh, and seeing weekly videos on tips on being successful as both a pre-med as well as a medical student and the next year as a resident. So um, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, comment down below with any of your questions. I will see you guys in the next one. Happy Thanksgiving, my friends.